Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Bill Bailey. And I'm Sally. And welcome to Happy Gospel Church here in Bradenton, Florida. We're so glad you're tuned in to today's broadcast. I don't believe it's by accident, but rather that God has orchestrated our time together. And you know, as we celebrate this spring season, it's a season of new life, a freshness, and we're believing God for that new life for you that's only found in Jesus Christ. You know, babe, I remember the old timers used to to sing that song, only Jesus will satisfy your soul. Only he can cleanse your heart and make you whole. And we believe Jesus is able to bring new life to you in whatever situation you're in. Jesus Christ can make the difference. And that's why we're coming to you today. I'd love to be able to connect with you on social media. We're on all of the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Plus you can also join our live stream services every Sunday morning on any of our accounts. You can find more information on our social media and our website at happygospelchurch.com. I also have an email address that I'd love for you to send me any prayer request. We would be honored to pray for you. And so you can go to that link that's on the screen right now. But listen, enjoy today's service. There's some great gospel music coming up next, and then I'll be following it with a powerful message from God's Word. Thank you for watching Happy Gospel Church here in Bradenton, Florida. I'm walking on the King's Highway, soon I shall reach home someday, then I'll be home to stay. Walking on the King's Highway, I'm happy as I go along, I'm singing a happy song, to heaven's family I belong. Walking on the King's Highway, walking on the King's Highway. My soul is now rejoicing, for I'm heaven bound. Soon I shall reach that city built on holy ground. Angels will have to listen to us as we sing the blessed song of redemption to our Lord and King. I'm walking on the King's Highway. Soon I shall reach home someday. Then I'll be home to stay. Walking on the King's Highway. I'm happy as I go along. I'm singing a happy song to heaven's family I belong. Walking on the King's Highway. Walking on the King's Highway. Yeah, you're doing good. Just keep it going. Now I've had my share of trouble as I've journeyed here. More than my share of blessings that, that have brought me cheer. This world is just my life, my journey soon will end. I'm on the Blessed King's Highway, walking with my friend. Oh, I'm walking on the King's Highway, soon I shall reach home someday. Then I'll be home to stay, walking on the King's Highway. I'm happy as I go along, I'm singing a happy song. To heaven's family I belong, walking on the King's Highway, walking on the King's Highway. Yes, I'm walking on the King's Highway, soon I shall reach home someday, then I'll be home to stay, walking on the King's Highway. I'm happy as I go along, I'm singing a happy song, to heaven's family I belong.
Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 54. Then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. Say that last line together with me. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You are also one of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Verse 59, And about the space of an hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what you say. And immediately, while he yet spoke, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the rooster crows, you shall deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to us by the Holy Ghost today. May we hear clearly from you, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. say it one more time. Amen. You may be seated. Is there anyone in this room today that's ever done what you said you wouldn't do? Yesterday? Is there anybody here that's ever went where you said you'd never go? Is there anyone here that's ever said what you said you would never say? I find it interesting when we look at the life of Peter because part of the resurrection story that we celebrated last week, Resurrection Sunday, has something so intricate and so powerful that at first glance you may read right past it and not understand the significance of it. But I'd like to turn your attention for a moment to Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. It's Mark's account of the resurrection. I didn't use it as our text last week, but, but if you're not careful, you will... You'll read right past it, but in Mark's account of the gospel, in regards to the resurrection, you have Mary, the mother of James, and Mary Magdalene there at the tomb, and the Lord speaking to her by the angel, and yet the scripture says in verse 7, go your way, Mark 16, 7, tell his disciples and Peter. That he goes before you into Galilee, there shall you see him. And, and he said unto you, Jesus is saying to Mary and Mary Magdalene, listen, go tell my disciples to, to meet me. Meet me in Galilee. But he doesn't name all of them, but he does name Peter. And I don't know about you, but, but I have been Peter in my life before. Don't look at me so holy this morning. So have you. Peter had done what he said he wouldn't do. He, he had went where he said he wouldn't go. He, he said what he said he would never say. And in the process of all of this, Jesus gives him this reminder through Mary and Mary Magdalene. Jesus tells Peter, listen, I still got you. I still love you. I still have a plan for you. I still have a call for you. Is there anybody that is thankful that God is married to the backslider, that he loves you irrespective? This morning I want to talk to you about it because it's part of your resurrection story. 
that God can turn whatever the lemons that may be in your life into lemonade, that God can turn it around for your good and for my glory. When I think about the glory that God wants to do in every one of our lives, I'm reminded of what Tommy Barnett called in the Old Testament the glory of the Lord. He called them the glow rays of the Lord. The G-L-O-W-R-A-Y-S of the Lord. The glow rays. That woman who showed up at our accident scene last week that I was telling you about had a glow ray about her. She hadn't just been in church. She had been with the Lord. And God used her to bring comfort to that young girl that needed it the most at the time. The glow rays of God that he wants to be evident and manifested in our lives. But in the process of it, he works in the most difficult of circumstances. Because I don't know if, if you get this or not on a Sunday morning when we're all dressed up for church today. But can I tell you, every one of us is a hot mess. Come on, I've seen some of you in, in real life. If we were to do a movie of your life, it would be rated R. For real. How many got some stuff in your life you'd just rather not talk about right now? Come on, some of you, we're going to talk about you today. Because we've all been there. I mean, if we were to truly get real today, we would understand every one of us has weakness in our life. Every one of us has what... I've taught my guys here theologically means proclivities. It means a vulnerability, a weak spot in your life. Every one of us has them in our life. And the enemy of your soul desires to work in the weak area, the vulnerability of your life. And yet, we tend to want to shy away from our weaknesses because we think if someone knew our weakness, then they wouldn't like us. They wouldn't care for us. They wouldn't applaud us. If they really knew who you were or who I was, they wouldn't pat us on the back. They wouldn't want to be our friend. They wouldn't want to be our colleague. And yet, Paul would say in Corinthians that it's our weaknesses that his strength is made perfect or complete that God is drawn to the weakness of your life unlike the character of other people who are drawn to your success because everyone wants to be around success matter of fact we teach it in life coaching and building of be around successful people you are who you you become who you are around you are known by the associations that you keep and and yes that is true but 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 we have also understood that even the greatest amongst us have tremendous flaws in their life think about it your bible's full of them uh, let me just give you a few anybody remember the story of david Look at David's life. David, the great singer of Israel. David, the man after God's own heart. David, anointed king miraculously as a teenager. And yet David one day commits adultery with Bathsheba. David tries to cover it up by having Uriah put on the front line. In effect, murdering his number one man. Uriah, the one who wasn't willing to sleep with his wife as David's storyline to, to cover up the adulterous relationship between him and Bathsheba. Uriah wasn't even willing when he brought him home to stay in his own bed. He slept outside the door of his home because he said, if my men can't come home to their families, why should I be extended this pleasure? And yet... David has him killed. We know the back end of the story, a man after God's own heart. But think about it. David, how could he be so anointed and so messed up at the same time? Yeah. David's not the only one. Your Bible's full of them. There's the story of Jonah in the, New in the Old Testament. 
Jonah, he was an anointed preacher. I mean, Jonah was anointed. Jonah could preach the paint off the wall. Jonah preached so well and was so anointed, even the cows repented. The livestock repented. <laughs> Got to tell you this last night with, with all of the weather that we had yesterday across from where Sally and I live, there's a large uh, acreage that has cows on it. And as we came home from, uh, from dinner last night, a couple of the cows had got outside of the fence and they were close to the road. So when I got home, I called 911 to tell them the cows are out. <laughs> and then I did what most folks like me do. I got in my little golf cart that we have, and I rode over there to look at the cows. Try to make sure they didn't get in the street until the police officers came. And sure enough, the sheriff's officers, actually, they showed up. Uh, uh, one of them was, was somebody that I knew, Pastor Bailey. And I said, yes, yeah. said the cows are out. But it was amazing, as soon as the cows, the two of them, saw me and the sheriff's officer, they jumped back over the fence line and got in their pasture. <laughs> they knew they were in trouble. Jonah preached with such a passion and such an anointing that even the livestock, the Bible says, repented, like those cows did last night. And yet when God called him to Nineveh, he wasn't willing to go because Nineveh was such a wicked city, i.e., Jonah was a bigot. How could Jonah be so anointed by God and have such a disdain for certain people in his heart that he didn't want to go there? They were so evil. They were so nasty. They were so ugly. And, and, and all of those sorts of things that in his heart, he despised those people. But yet Jonah, God still had a plan for him. Set up a whale to swallow him. <laughs> How Jonah lived in the belly of a whale, I'll never know but miraculously swallowed him and then vomited him up. And guess where he vomited him up? Where he was supposed to be. God has a way of getting mine's and yours attention, doesn't he? I'm amazed at the length that God will go to to get yours and mine's attention. But aren't you glad, those of you that are saved, that one day he got your attention? One day you got it some way, somehow. Hallelujah. How could someone be so good and yet so bad? How can someone be so anointed and yet so flawed? Peter, the dichotomy of strength and weakness. His, his heart was right when he told the Lord, I will never deny you. And Jesus said, you don't even know what you're talking about, Peter. The rooster's not going to crow three times until you have denied me three times. Peter said, I'm going to build the kingdom. I'm going to be the one that stands when nobody else is standing. And Jesus said, Peter, you don't even know what you're talking about. Because Jesus knows you and I better than we know ourselves. We preach about the character of God. The character of God is basically found in three different ways. Found, number one, he is omnipotent, which is all-powerful. Secondly, he's omnipresent, which means he's everywhere all the time. But thirdly, he is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. And because he's omniscient, he knows what you're going to do tomorrow before tomorrow ever gets here. He knows the decisions you're going to make next week before you even realize you have a decision to make next week. Why? Because he is all-knowing. You don't have to know everything. Could I preach right here for a moment? You don't have to know it all. But if you place your faith and your trust in a God who does know it all, he's got tomorrow taken care of before tomorrow ever gets here. Hallelujah. How could Peter be so anointed and yet 
so frail, so evil. How could both be in the same person? And yet, the Bible says that God is drawn to our weakness. Peter, who would later preach on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people would get saved. Peter is the one with whom we, we get the practice of sending out handkerchiefs because they would send out handkerchiefs so that people would get those hankies and, and the Bible says they would be healed. Peter was the one that the book of Acts records that his very shadow would pass amongst the people and they would be healed. This is Peter, how anointed he is, but can I take you to a place where he was in utter failure where where he had reached the lowest of lows your bible says that in our text this morning in the gospel of luke that while jesus is taken from the garden of gethsemane and he is in the midst of great interrogation and at the time they are whipping him with the cat of nine tails 39 times as he as he gets those 39 different uh, slaps and as at the end of of that cat of nine tails there there's a glass structure or, or chip that every time he was whipped with that whip that chip of glass would would just tear into his back his back looked like hamburger meat by the time they were done it was excruciating and painful and as they they are interrogating him Peter, your Bible says, has done, went and is sitting around a fire. And as he's around this fire, he's warming himself with the people whom I call the Jesus haters. They're the people who, who had come there to warm themselves. They, they despised the people of God. They despised Jesus, this one who called himself the Messiah, the Son of God. And Peter is found warming himself with the wrong people and the wrong crowd. Let me preach here for just a moment. Be careful who you warm yourself with. Be careful who you associate yourself with. Be careful who makes you feel all good and comfortable. Because Peter found himself being warmed by the very people who weren't out for his good. They weren't out to help him. They weren't out to encourage him. They weren't out to, as a positive influence in his life. The same people that cried, Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest on Palm Sunday were the same people that cried crucify him less than a week later. Yeah. People are fickle. People are fickle. There is absolutely nothing wrong in your life that Jesus cannot fix, that Jesus cannot cure, that Jesus cannot perform a miracle. He is the way maker, the burden bearer, the miracle worker, and he wants to do that in your life today. Could I encourage you to send me a note and let me know how I can pray for you, how we can effectively minister to you. The link is at the bottom of the screen. I would love to hear from you and your testimony of how today's program has been a blessing to you. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You can also see our live services as we live stream every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, thank you so much for watching today from Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida. I'll see you next week. Well, today I find myself overwhelmed with life again. A familiar road I've walked before and just as dark as it was then. But this time something's different. God's peace is deep inside. His strength is coming over me and I'm understanding why. I know him better now than I ever have before. I know him better now, and I've never loved him more. There were times I walked this 
very road and I know I had my doubts, but today my faith is strong. I know him better now. Mm -hmm. So I walk the steps of grace through tomorrow's circumstance and the depths of sorrow I'll embrace. With a newfound faith I have I haven't always trusted Or believed the way I should Then I watched him take this trial of mine And work it for my good I know him better now Than I ever had before I know him better now and I've never loved him more There were times I walked this very road And I know I had my doubts But today my faith is strong I know him better now I realize that I could never Fully know his ways But with every mile of air of every passing day, oh, every passing day, I know him better now than I ever have before. I know him better now, and I've never loved him more. There were times I walked this very road, and I know I but today my faith is strong I know him better now Than I ever have before I know him better now And I've never loved him more There were times I walked this very road And I know I have my doubts But today my faith is strong Better, better now. So much better.